<clears throat> Hi, Sarah here. Can anybody hear me? Hopefully, just having a few technical difficulties. A few technical difficulties there. So you let me know in the comments if you can see me. So I'm Sarah from Red Rocking Bird, and this is part of um, a live stream from the world's biggest virtual Christmas market. So we should have been streaming over on there, but that wasn't working either. So I'm here live today to show you some of my clay projects. So. I have my clay at the ready and I'm going to show you some of that, but a little bit of background about myself. Um, I've always been creative, love absolutely everything creative. And so from that, Red Rocking Bird was born and it started off as a greetings card company and it's a sewing company and now it's everything creative. And that's brought me here to everything on YouTube. So um, the first little YouTube I did was this cute elephant. Some of you might have seen that. Learned quite a lot since the first video. So um, doing that and gradually I've decided to do all sorts of different things. And this week's video was this chalkboard sign. I know everything's in reverse, isn't it? So never mind about that for now. And I will get onto the clay in a moment. I will do, I promise. Just wanted to show you this really cute backpack that I embroidered. So if you do like to see any of these creative um, projects, come and see the rest of the things on my channel. Some of you will have seen a lot of them already as well. So somebody do comment and let's see if you can see me because I would like to begin with my clay craft soon because um, a couple of weeks ago I made some little got a lot of lighting going on here some little clay pins like this and um, we um, got a lot of nice comments from them you can make them anything you like and so we said let's Let's, oh, hi from Karen there. Hi, Karen, and hi, Emma. That's good. Good to know there's people there, <laughs> there's people watching. Um, so, yes, we made some cute little, um, I shouldn't show you that one again, but we made lots of nice um, pins and finished them off as a nice little gift. You can give them away like that. I think they're super cute. And I'm also getting on with so many other Christmas crafts at the moment. You can see some of them in the background here. This wood sign was another one that I did a few weeks ago. And I'm in the middle of doing some last minute Christmas ideas for everything. And you'll see some sneak peek of a little penguin here that's coming up. That one's very, very cute. Let me show you. What do you think of him? Love him. Little bauble for your Christmas tree, hopefully. And so, should I show you some? I'll show you some of my the clay. Oh, I've got Chantelle. Hi, Chantelle. We'll just bring the camera down. And so, the very first thing that I do, absolutely always, right, where's my pencil? always always think right what are we going to design and so today I'm going to show you right from the beginning I did this for the other project which is um, all those pins and we took you step by step through it all and so I'm just going to do a similar today but of course we're doing a Christmas theme hi John and so I'm going to do a little bear a bit like a polar bear so I draw my basic shape. Can you see? Can you actually see? And somebody tell me, can you see? And can you hear me? That's also the wonder. I might be doing things, but can you actually hear me? <laughs> and so I'm going to give him some little ears. Oh, this one's going to have a lovely um, scarf on. And so what we're doing here 
is we are drawing out our shapes and our ideas for cutting out. Um, oh, good. Thanks, Karen. You can hear me. Excellent. Um, so what we always do first is just draw out our shapes so that if you want to duplicate this shape, you the same pin or the same item, you've got a little template to use. And each one should be fairly similar if you want them to be similar, that is. And so this little guy is a bit like, have we got him here? Not sure I've got the bare one here. Let me see, we're doing, that was a little face one, but this one is going to be a little Christmas, um, little Christmas guy. And I think we could write a little message. And so all of these could be used for little pins, so brooches that we can put, um, you know, on our clothes, on our bag. I love to put them on my bag and, um, it, well, hair slides, everything. Sorry, I was thinking about something else then for a moment. So hi to everybody. Oh good, yes, we all love air dry clay. Yes, definitely. It's definitely one for Christmas. It's definitely one for the kids and the family. Get everybody involved. And so I'm going to draw a little bear. It's not one, it's not super great, but you get the idea. We draw a bear and then I always go round with my um, marker pen, design it, and then I come up with they're a bit better, aren't they? And so I've drawn a few out here. And if you would like any of these, I'll link them in, descri in the description below later on. I will. I don't think I've done that bit yet for this. Just like the ones we did for um, the foxes and the birds and all of that, they're all linked in the description of that video too. So you can always do that. I like to do that on all of my videos, give you somewhere to go and actually get to use them. So that's good. So you see the other designs, they're rather cute. You tell me, which one would you like me to make now? Which one of these? Oh, John, your router's just, just dropped out. I don't think that's anything to do with me, <laughs> thank goodness. But, um, right. So first of all, what we need to do with, so what I do first, actually, wouldn't I? I would cut, I need to cut out my shapes. And so I've designed, done the design. I'm happy with my little idea and then I'm going to use that as my template and so the first thing we always need to do is give our clay a really good knead first we need to do what we call is oops, um, condition the clay and so you really don't need very much at all for these projects I mean you can make them bigger you make them as big as you like um, you could do a design just like that there and do it quite large the size of a bauble and um, that would look great and so we have our clay anybody want to decide which one I'm going to do should we do the bear or should we do um, got a little penguin Oh gosh, this is the messy part, isn't it? So first of all, we have to really condition that clay and make sure it's nice and soft and supple so that um, it's going to just roll nicely and be easier to work with. I really try and um, add a little... Um, Studio 77, hello. Um, yes, a penguin. Should we do the penguin? We always love a penguin. I did a little um, penguin um, days till Christmas sign from Felt with Studio 77 and she did a cute little plushie. So do go over and see that. I haven't got it with me here at the minute, but do go over and um, check those out. They're very, very cute if you haven't done already, that is. And so we've conditioned the clay made it nice and um, nice and soft. The Merry Christmas one too, please. Yes, we should try, try, we'll of course do a few. 
We've also got, here's one I made earlier because I'm not going to make you sit around and wait till they dry. <laughs> um, so yes, we get really lovely and messy. Um, so keep a cloth on hand. Need to keep my little bracelet here nice and out of it because that is another one of my designs on my um, tutorials. Um, free, really simple little pattern beautiful gift for somebody at Christmas, so why not? There we go, right. So I'm going to direct you down again now so we can see what's going on. And I always work on um, an old tile. Well, it doesn't have to be an old tile, but you know what I mean, just um, a tile, because I like to be able to pick everything that I'm doing up and take it away from my workstation. I'm actually in the kitchen here right now, I'm normally upstairs in my workshop, but um, I'm downstairs in the kitchen today, um, because I believe I needed to be a bit closer to the router. So we have done that. So I always work on a tile. It's um, a smooth tile. And um, if you're a bit worried that it might be getting stuck, you can use some greaseproof paper and you can use any kind of rolling pin, I think. And we do a nice, a nice soft motion. And so that we don't drive it too much into the, to the base here, into our tile, we just keep rolling gently and evenly and turning gently and evenly and turning. And I think we will do um, this one fairly thick, fairly thick this time. So that's thick enough. And so where did I put the penguin? Oh dear, got the, um, I picked the penguin up a minute ago. Where did we put it? So yeah, I've got all the designs here. Can you see them down there? Yes, you can. Um, oh, this one's ever so cute. I love that one. Um, I did. Oh, we'll have to do a little bird, actually. <laughs> everything I seem to do, everything always seems to involve the birds. So um, there's a cute little gnome. We love that one. What did I do with the penguin? Oh, dear. I've put it down. I've got that many things around me. We'll do... Um, we'll do the bear first so what we do is just simply tap it down leave it there and uh, you can use um any kind of knife i couldn't find the barrel of my um one of these but actually i really like being close and in, in there and cutting so i place it on here not doing it that accurately today um it's easier to cut more of the excess away so we've not got so much to deal with and so oops move that there and so if you want to use my designs so absolutely feel free um, or design your own and you could scan them in and then reuse them for other things or as I say you can just draw it on a piece of card and then um, and then just use it as your template. Get the kids involved. They absolutely love designing and making all things new, especially if they can personalize it. And so just work nice and neatly there. There we go. Nearly there. I feel like I'm in a little bit of a rush to do this today. So really just take your time. But do you know what? Each one is going to be unique anyway. And look, I printed it on the back of something else. So the um, patterns come through. And so there we go. We've cut this one. You can still see all right. And then what we need to do is just take the tiniest amount of water. I really don't like to use too much water. And we're simply going to pop him down there again. 
I'm not going to worry about these marks that I've got on mine. And we're going to try and get as many of those marks out as we can. You can smooth the edges or try and keep them straight. If you're struggling with your using your finger, you can wet your paintbrush and that gets nicely into the base there. I find that really good because look, kind of tucks the underside back in as well. So that works really lovely. I absolutely love working with air dry clay. It's just one of those really forgiving materials that you can just do so many different things with. Um, you might have seen my clay dishes one. So of course, oh, it's there already in shot. My little bird dish. I like to keep my rings in there. I should have taken mine off, shouldn't I? And popped it in there. Um, ever so cute to make as a little gift for somebody, a little dish. Well, obviously make it for yourself. And so there we go. He's um, almost ready. And um, we just leave them to dry. And I leave them to dry just perfectly on here. And don't leave them to dry in um, a warm area. Always let them to dry, let them dry in more of a cooler area, really, because you want them to dry slowly. If um, they dry too quick, there's more chance for them to crack. But something this size, I've never found that it's ever cracked. So um, I don't know whether it's just me being lucky, but I just really add as little water as absolutely possible. You need a little bit on there to let your fingers smooth it, but um, not enough, so we're soaking it. Um, right. I think we'll um, make a little bird one. Um, right, for the bird, this kind of bird, and with lots of other um, designs I like to do, I like to say, right, which cook, which cutty cook, can't even say it, which cookie cutters have we got, and which bits of the shape can we use? So I might have um, some of these, and can we cut part of the shape off and make it into something? And with this one, we can use this roundness here of the cookie cutter. And whoops, see, Having that one there, I've just gone and nicked it with my um, nail. But as I say, it's ever so forgiving. You just smooth it out and you're good to go again. You've got a bit of a lopsided legs going on here. So we can't have that, can we? So if you do decide that, look, just take a little bit away. And there we go. And so the same with this little guy here, we're going to smooth him out. And this one's going to be this little bird. So I'll use the brush again and tidy up down here. And now if I wasn't going to add anything else to him, I would leave him right where he is to just let him dry. But I am going to add something else. I'm just gonna clean my hands up first. Um, I'm going to add some wire in as a bit of detail. So just, um, because I, I think if you can leave them to dry there, you're not affecting the back of them. And then once they've hardened and sort of firmed up just a little bit on the top, you can then gradually shove them off and turn them over and then let the underside dry because when you take them off the board they're always a little bit more wet underneath and um, you can tell that because um, it goes a lot whiter when it's fully fully dry you can see the grayness in it when it's still wet so for this little guy we are going to give him a little tail so I've got some craft wire, any, any um, gorge craft wire, any thickness will actually do. So you can just take a snippet. And what I'm simply going to do is I'm going to make like a little uh, 
a little tail for him, a little bit of feathers at the back. This just gives something, something different. So look, just, you see, just, um, I'll show you properly in a minute once I've done it. I don't think I cut enough off. This one will have to be just a two pronger, <laughs> a two, two bits. I normally do um, three bumps there. And so, can you see, um, just done it like this and then I'll twist these together. Oh, hi, Neil. Loving, oh, thumbs up from us and loving the dog too. Yeah, I absolutely love the dog. This one is super cute. Maybe we'll have to paint him in a bit. I do love that. And so here, this is going to be his little tail and it's going to stick through here slightly long. So I'm going to just trim that off and I will pop it in there. Oops, slide it through, making sure you're sliding it perfectly through the middle and into there. There we go. It's got a little tail. Smooth out where it's made a bump upwards. And then I think he needs some little feet. So I'm going to do two little feet. Well, two little legs they are really because they're fairly long. And what I do to make sure that um so uh, just to make sure it sticks inside i'm going to bend this end and have a little curve there like that i would normally bring this a lot closer to me to work with so um i'm going to bend both of those like that and it's going to be two little legs uh, let's have a think. So the legs need to go this way. So we've got the curve here and this little bit of it here. We're going to just poke in and then look, we gradually try and stay as flat as possible. There we go. It's got a little leg. Let's give him another little leg. Can you see that? Okay. Can we see that? I'll give you another close up in a minute. I will have to pick him up in the end, won't I? Said I wasn't. I was going to pick him up, but there's his little leg. Oops. Guide that back down again. And there we go. Cute little bird. I kind of poked out a bit there, didn't I? As I say, you really take your time and um, get it in right. And there we go. Shall I put, I'll pick him up and you can have a closer look. And we'll smooth him back down in a moment. So there he is. And we shall leave him there to dry. So I think on the packet, it tends to stay to say, um, takes 24 hours to dry, but I tend to see that more 48 hours or a bit longer if you do go thicker, really. So, um, so yeah just judge it and just make sure it looks white like this looks white whereas this does look still quite gray so it is white and then make sure any of your leftover um clay that you actually cover that up and seal it so it doesn't go dry um so it doesn't go dry there so as i say i tend to fill the whole of the tile with all my different um shapes and then i will just let them sit there and dry after 24 hours i will turn them over and then i'll leave them alone still and still let them dry and so once they are dry in my Blue Peter moment, here's one I made earlier. <laughs> or here's several I made earlier. <laughs> and um, so this is oh, what I should have said, shouldn't I? This is actually um, a little paper clip here in the top. I just took a paper clip and I snipped the top off just so that I got that really nice, really nice curve there in it. I could have done it with the wire as well. And as you can see there, it's got three prongs on the wire. And that is going to be our cute little bird. 
Where's the design gone? Over here. So I think he'd look ever so cute with a little scarf on. You could, um, you could actually hang him round your neck uh, and um, hang him round your neck. Hang him as a necklace, that's what I actually mean. But um, he would look lovely on the Christmas tree when we finished him. So as with this one, I started to paint that one. He just doesn't have any legs. Um, there we go. So you let them fully, fully dry. And then what we have to do, here we do have the penguin. We use this dish. I'll just tidy it up afterwards. Thanks, Emma and Karen. Great idea. Yes, I'm full of great ideas. <laughs> well, no, I just, uh, I mean that in the nicest of ways, just like with um, the paperclip idea. I love the fact that you can use things for other things. I just love repurposing anything and just sort of making things from other things. If you haven't got one thing, but you've got something else, try and make that thing into that other thing, <laughs> if you get me. Yeah, I'm sure you get me. And so we have the penguin here. I maybe didn't smooth it off quite as much. And so we get the finest sandpaper that you can get. And we just simply simply sand away till we're happy and we get some nice edges. You can either do it so you've got a nice flat edge or you can do it so you've got a smooth edge, however you like your pins to look. And so that is a super cute penguin there we have. Can't wait to see that one finish. I wonder what colour we'll have to do him. So you can sand the top and you can, of course, sand the bottom and sand it all until you are fully happy with it. And then the next part of the process is to lay them all out again. And then first of all, I paint the, um, the back of them with white acrylic. And I tend to add just a little bit of water just so that it smooths on really nicely. I let all of those dry and then I turn them over and I paint the tops and the sides. I had a little technique that I used in the other clay pin um, one. So do go and check that one out. Um, it's a nice little video, that one with the, with the clay pins. Um, as I say, we could, um, I think I was getting onto it earlier. Um, this one I put a little hole and we can um, hang it up on the Christmas tree so you could put a little message on the bear there and, um, and hang it up on the Christmas tree. And so, yeah, so we make sure they're all covered fully in a white acrylic paint. Or you could use, if they were all going to be uh, pink, then you could paint them all pink first, by all means. I just like to start with that white base because I tend to not always, um, I tend to not always paint the back the same colour or depending on the shape I might only paint up to this edge or I might paint up to the back edge it just depends on the design like with this one um, the edge is all white so I think that looks pretty nice whereas with that one you know the edge is green so if you do them all white first you have that option of doing that um, so they're all painted white, that's what we want to do go for, and then you can either choose to paint them all different kind of wacky different colours, obviously if you've got a certain colour theme for Christmas or anything, or if you're making one as a nice little gift, um, then do it in your friend or family member's favourite colours, that's always a nice idea, and I today have my colours, so I've got some acrylic paints here and I've just mixed um, a nice turquoisey green and a bit of a soft red there. Um, it's like a soft crimson. And they're going to be my main colours and then I've just got some extra little colours that will go with those things, those colours as well. So the um, question is, which one are we going to do? 
I, my favorite thing for um, doing this is just having them all in front of me, sitting in front of the TV or in front of my favorite YouTubes. And um, I just tend to, I, I just tend to paint away and yeah, um, paint relaxing watching the TV. <laughs> That's it. That's all. Um, so what colour should we do this little bird? Which colour? Anybody? Just thinking, where's my little bear? We'll have to have a go at the bear. Maybe we'll, um, I think we'll do, um, should we do him grey first? I know it seems a bit weird to do him grey, but just want to show you very simply, I've got a really fine brush here. This one, do you see why you wanted it white? Because I am simply just going to paint around the edge. Not, not around the edge, but paint here around the edge, create an edge. How many more? Oh, we've got plenty of watchers. Oh, a red robin. Oh dear, I did it. I did it. It's grey. How weird. <laughs> I don't really know why I did it grey. Um, because well, because I like a nice grey. It's quite. Um, I'm going to add some um, white to that grey. Actually, it's a bit too grey. And that's what you can do with yours. Just experiment and see what you want to do along the way. And hello, Rachel. I think you're watching somewhere. I'm sure you're watching somewhere. And Orla and Sophia. So be nice and careful with the paint and just enjoy that little process of painting them. And so there we go. I'm going to sit that aside and let that dry. So what I tend to do, I tend to say, right, now I'm using the red. So I'll go along and I'll go along and paint everything on all of the ones I want to be red. I haven't quite decided yet which ones I'd wanted to paint or what colours I'm going to paint and I think yet. So never mind. I can't find my pencil again. Where did it go? So what you can do, you can either completely freehand them or you can of course draw on with your pencil first. Um, so let's go in here. We're going to do a nice pink bear here. So has anybody got any questions about air dry clay? As I say, I use it a lot. Um, I get an awful lot of questions from everybody on YouTube about the durability and how easily it breaks. Um, I find it really lovely to work with. And once you have given it, um, probably you know um two coats of the acrylic paint i will tend to give it because if you can see here first of all it just goes on a bit too thin for my liking so you want to build up um the layers and as you're doing that it obviously builds up the durability of it and makes them a lot um stronger as you go so So yes, I do get a lot of questions asking about how strong it is and people worrying about using it because they think it um, might be really fragile. And I suppose if you haven't used it before, it is, it's a very good question. Um, it's very good, but I, I find it is really quite durable. Obviously, it will break if you put some quite force on it. But um, like this one, I can give it really quite quite a good push 
and nothing happens and I know it won't I'm really quite a good push because with this one it's got um two layers of white acrylic and then I put on some sharpie um lines there with sharpie and some dots and then it's got two coats of the varnish and the glaze I've got another video that goes into uh, me experimenting with different glazes and varnishes so if you are interested you can go and um go and have a look at that one and see all the different ways you could glaze it it's a really quick six minute video so I think it is anyway I think it's six minutes so hello we've got some more people joining us do I always use das clay? I've got that one here with me now. No, I don't always. I absolutely always used to use das clay. And I quite like using this terracotta one as well. But um, often I quite like a nice lighter piece. But I suppose if you wanted to paint it and it's going to be like a nice black or a dark grey or something, start with this and then it'd be easier to build the colour back up. But this one actually is... Um, the Hobbycraft um, clay, and it's such a reasonable price, and I think it works pretty much the same. So I'm using that one for this, and I've used um, a whole block of that um, before, and I think it works great. So no, I don't always use DAS. I like that one. There's so many others on the market, and um, if you're going to do a lot, instead of getting these smaller packets, you can get a much bigger um pack that would last you really quite a long time and you know it's really even more reasonably priced so you know or if you want to make um, a much bigger item then um, I'd go for the bigger pack that you can get there's quite a lot of them on Amazon and places. Can you cover a small ball to make a Christmas tree decoration? Can you cover a small ball? Uh, yes, most definitely. What a good idea. That is an excellent idea. Um, what some people might be worried about if you put something on something is um, the air dry clay shrinks. I don't find it shrinks that much, but it does shrink um, a fair amount. Well, but it does shrink a little bit. And so some people would be worried that if you put it on something, it would slightly um, retract. So like this one, you um, cut your circle out and then you put it into a bowl. And then as it dries, it comes away from the size a little. So I suppose if you covered a ball, what I would probably do with that is, let's have a think. I don't know whether I'd make two halves around the ball and then shape it or another good one um, is like people, you see, if you want to make something lighter weight, you could scrumple up some tin foil and then cover it in clay. So um, I think with these things, you've just got to experiment and try it. And I absolutely love experimenting and trying different things. So um just try it and as we've just been talking there the first layer of this acrylic is actually dried so we can go on and give that one another coat of the paint this is my first live for anything like this so it's quite nice to try something else um, and as I say, it was for the world's biggest virtual Christmas market. And hopefully um, there'll be plenty of people coming to see. And as I said, we have so many more Christmas um, videos coming here over my channel. My channel really been busy this week, getting on with lots of filming and creating new new ideas and so i think did you see here this is one of the um this is one of the ones it's not finished yet but this is the start and it's just using scrap fabrics and um things out of the recycling as i always love just recreating things into something else and um seeing what happens 
And so, right, let's get on with this little bear. I'll... Wash the paintbrush out. Should we go with a nice red? We'll have a nice red, um, so here. We'll just draw on with the paintbrush, a nice fine paintbrush there. Really get in nice and close so you can see it when you're doing it there yourself. There we go. And I'm going to add in the little bits that hang down here. There we go. Probably don't need to add too much more paint to that because it looks fairly thick enough. There we go. And then we shall give him a little white, little white muzzle there. So be nice and careful. I absolutely love doing these. I really do love doing them. They're so cute, so fun. And then you can either go in, whoops, can either go in with your Sharpie and draw on um, the small designs, or if possible, I always think it's good to use um, to use acrylic. So if you've got an acrylic um, pen, then brilliant. I don't have any at the moment, those. So I'm going to practice here first. try and get his little eyes in and you know if you do make a mistake obviously it's so easy to make a mistake if you do make a mistake you can either rub it out quickly with a little bit of water or just go oh let it dry and then go over with um the pink again whatever color you've got underneath so there's his little eyes. And I'm gonna to wait to put the nose on until um, it's dried there. Yeah, he's got little, little hands. Dip back into the paint. So you hardly need to mix any paint for these. Um, had a little trick for if you do want to paint them again the same colour the next day on my clay pin video there's a little trick there for keeping how to keep the um keep it oh I can't speak can I how to um keep it moist until you're next using it This one a bit thick there, but there we go. And I'm, I'm going to put this one on my tree when I'm done. So see him there. What we'd simply do is just get a little bit of ribbon and tie it through there. Let's think of some other ideas we could do. Earlier I found, oh, some of these little, um, these little pegs and you know if you find some of the ones which are slightly bigger these would look so cute um say if you stuck them on the front there and then you had all your christmas cards so if you put um, a load of pegs on a ribbon and then put them on there and then you put all your christmas cards underneath how cute would that look it would look amazing i really think so 
So I'm slowly running out of time here, aren't I? I'm talking too much. So um, if you do want to see the rest of um, these being painted and the finished designs, I'm going to do um, a second video, a video after this, and you can see how they all finish up. And of course, wouldn't it be lovely if we make some and we can give them away as gifts, put them in a little cello wrap there, put them on just a little card, and um, as I say, um, we could have it on a peg, we can put it on some ribbon, you could put them on um, a hair slide, um, lots of different things. So I tend to use these, these pins. So I've, I've put a link um, to these in the description as well. And um, they come with a little butterfly thing at the back and what I do is I do these all flat because if you don't do them flat and you try and add the pin in and you want this to dry it's going to dry once you dry it this way up it's going to dry all wobbly so and it's just the way I do them so you can see and the other thing that's nice to pop in is these eye pins. So if you wanted it, which one was our one? So earlier we got these and for this little bear, I might say, oh, let's have him. There, so we could put a little eye pin in. There we go. And then we'd let that dry. If you want it twizzled, just twizzle it, make it that way round. And we just let it dry with that in and it will set all lovely. Um, so that's your one option. Or um, as I say, with the pins, I put them on at the end and you can use just the strongest glue you can find. You can use an epoxy one or I tend to find, you know, these really runny glues that in these small containers and the tiniest bit on the back of there. Just put a tiny dot on and then simply place it on and let it dry overnight. And then we get our little piece of card, do a little doodle on it. Or why don't you use um, an old Christmas card or something like that? Just cut it to size, put um, your pin through and write a little message, color, cover it and wrap and they look absolutely gorgeous. So we need to try and wait for this, this one to dry, let's waft it a little bit. Oh yeah, hair slide, hair slide slides would be amazing. I know my nieces would like that. They would love that, I'm sure. So if they're watching, there we go. Oh, this was another one that I designed, um, but I don't think I put that on my sheet. Is um, All I simply did with that is cut out a long strip um, of the clay and just cut the two ends into that shape like that. And then I simply just curved that one under I curved that one under and then just to hold it up I'd got a, a spare little piece of clay that I just sat underneath to hold this under to let that dry and I think that's so cute that would look really cute on your bag you could um I, I think I'd written to put on there ho 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 but um you could put your name on it or anything and pop it on your bag these bits might be a little bit fragile but as I say if you um spray varnish them or um, there's lots of options and as I say I go through some of the options in one of my other videos but Mod Podge is also an option and um, the glaze is also an option and another option that is brilliant is your nail varnish. Always a good option. So where are we up to here? Should we see, is this one dry enough yet? Let's try and finish at least one. But as I say, um, please do come and have a look at my next video and I will show you all of them fully made. And um, I shall sit in front of the TV tonight and I shall complete these, hopefully with a glass of gin or something.
that would be nice. And just sit and relax. It's a cold day today, so maybe a bit the fire on too. I've got a nice log burner here. I love it. And so you can also go in and add some details. And that's what I love about these. Just get a really fine little paintbrush and really just add lots of details. And quite often what I do, say we might think, oh, we might like a line around his tummy there. But instead of doing a line, what I sometimes do, well, I do quite a lot because sometimes it can be a bit heavy. I just go round with a dot. See, just like that. And it, it just gives extra little bits of detail. We could add some more bits like that around in a slightly darker pink around the head here around maybe for the fur. And so you'd leave these to dry fully and then add your accessory on the back. Or if you added one in like the little eye pin or like this, I think they're perfect doing them like that. And then they would look amazing on the tree. going to make some more um, clay dishes like that soon as well. I absolutely love making those. And um, made quite a large star because we've got um, plenty of star cutters. So these would be brilliant for the kids to kids to, to um, decorate. So if you yourself want to make it or you can get the kids to make a star and they're absolutely gorgeous. We did some with hand prints and then turned those into little robins. Um, and yeah, we've got lots of these to go and to paint. So I hope you do come and have a look at the rest of them on the other video. Um, this one's super cute. That one's um, a little coffee cup. I can't wait to get that one done. And so there's our little bear. He's not perfectly neat, but do you know what? I really like him like him a lot and so that would look cute wouldn't it on um so i'm back again <laughs> under my bright light <laughs> um he would look really cute on here if he's a bit smaller it could go in your hair like um you maybe don't want these ones with wire on in your hair but um for little girls or anybody they would look so cute in your hair I like to wear a name tag. <laughs> um, could you cover a polystyrene ball? Um, in the same way, yeah. I mean, a polystyrene ball might work better, mightn't it? Because some of that moisture would draw into the polystyrene maybe and cling it on. I've not tried, but I must do. I always like to give everything a go. So... Hi, hi, Angel Chaka, Chakra. I'm at the market too. Time for me, tease. Hi. <laughs> Hopefully you're doing well and everything. Thanks for coming over. And so that's nearly me done, I think. I hope you do come and see the rest of my tutorials. As I say, I have loads more, absolutely loads more. And if you're interested in sewing patterns, then as I say, that is where um, Rob, Red Rocking Bird sort of began 10 years ago now, I think, about 10 years ago. And this is one of my cute doorstops fantastic Christmas present wouldn't they be made cute for Christmas and um, I scaled the pattern down and made him a little little brother oh they're so cute and um, if you do like sewing as well I have lots of um, one of my favorite things to do with sewing is sewing from scraps well sewing from remnants and everything I just love creating little tiny things from things so um You'll find like my little bird. Oh, he's such a cute little bird. I've made a couple now for the Christmas tree. I must make some more because I'm always thinking 
I've always got that next project to do. I'm always trying to create and do lots of things. But um, here's a cute little bear. He's a lovely little one. He's a favourite. He's a cuddle bear. He's not that popular a pattern, but I think he is adorable. Absolutely adorable. He's popular with my dad's dog as well for some reason. He likes that one. <laughs> but... Um, there we go. So I hope you've enjoyed the clay. Um, as I say, do come and see. I've got this little penguin guy. He's going to be super cute, isn't he? So do come over and see and I will finish painting those and come and see the rest of them. So thank you ever so much for joining me. Um, thank you, Karen. Yep, you enjoy your evening too. Hope everyone has a good evening. It's time for tea soon. It is. So um, thanks for watching and please do come by again and see some more. I think I said everything I needed to say. And have a good Christmas. That was my last note. Bye for now. <laughs>